David Miller. I work for Red Hat Inc. and uh, I live in Seattle. Um, it's kind of weird. Uh, there are a lot of things that you can deal with online and in email and stuff like that, but some things just don't translate when you just see characters on the screen. So I think it's really good that people get to know each other, uh, find out that some of us have lives outside of working on the kernel, and maybe we have the uh, similar or conf or you know interests that coincide, and that's kind of like adds an extra element to. It. So now when I work with people, I'm like, that's not just Joe, that's Joe who snowboards just like me or whatever, and it's kind of like it's harder for me to be mean to people and having you know the email anxiety when I know them to a certain extent. Um, although it seems that we're working on similar process issues all the time, it seems like we're kind of like chipping away at different edges of some of the same problem every year. And it's kind of like, I guess it's nice to have a refreshing angle on things that we've covered perhaps several times before, maybe just once. And, you know, and over the year, we, over the year that spans between different kernel summits, we get, we get some experience with some things and something that I thought we had no clue on a year ago, I'll, I'll have a side chat with a with another developer here now. And I'm like, I figured out what we've been thinking about for the past year and I think we can solve it now. So this is gradual process that's always going on. I've been talking with Nick, Nick Piggin about uh, several op optimizations of various kinds that we're constantly having in the back of our head and we're always really close to accomplishing and we never can seem to find the time to pull it through. So we kind of try to feed off each other so we can actually accomplish those things. I've also been discussing various large cleanups I've been making in uh, various areas of the kernel with uh, other platform maintainers. I maintain the Spark port. I've been talking to the PowerPC folks and see if there's any collaboration we can do to simplify the same things that we work on, the same pieces of code that we happen to use, and so we can share more things between the two ports because I don't want to maintain it. They don't want to maintain it. So if we have one place, we can only make mistakes in one place. So that's great. I think we're kind of like in a weird transition phase right now. Uh, it's, it's, the scale of computing history seems to be really small compared to other scientific endeavors like the medical profession, uh, physics, things of this nature. And major accomplishments come over large spans of time, like 50 years, hundreds of years, things, things of this nature. Mathematics, same, same kind of situation. Whereas it seems like computer science has had this really compressed period where a lot of things have happened. And I'm wondering if we're at a point where there's some steam that needs to be let off for a little while before we can find the next great thing because we've made CPUs several gigahertz fast. We can squeeze this much memory into a, into a, a memory chip. I mean, it seems like that something needs to happen that ha that ha hasn't happened for a while, and I think Linux kernel is kind of like living in that ecosystem. So maybe the, the the end result is that Linux can refine itself a little bit more during this lull period. So we'll see what happens. Well, we've had some really interesting stuff. Um, I gave several presentations over the past, I'd say, a year and a half in Tokyo, Berlin, some other in uh, in Australia, which I can get into later. And the main focus has been on multi-queue networking. Uh, the whole gist of the matter is that we have these network interfaces that are getting increasingly faster, and with increased speed, there's more CPU uh, overhead involved in driving these cards. So instead of handling a thousand packets a second yet to handle a hundred thousand a second whatever what the cpu architects are giving to us is they're putting more cpu cores into our system more cpu threads within those cores so more computing resources but we just have one net networking card to funnel all this new work into so what they are doing with the networking hardware itself now is that they're allowing interrupts to be sent to the different CPUs so that we can spread the work out. And all of the work I've been doing for the past couple of years has been making sure Linux can take, take advantage of this. Two year, about two years ago or so, I made it such that on the receive side, we can use this uh, the flow spreading that they call it to distribute the work amongst different connections on the system going through the same networking card to different CPUs. Just recently, I've got it so that on the transmit side, we can do the same thing. We can split the work between different CPUs to transmit packets as well. So 
that's been like kind of like my uh, reason to exist over the past year or so besides my normal maintenance and bug fixing work of the networking. So that's really exciting. And the thing for me, it was very instructive because the first couple times I presented on this topic, I said, okay, here's, it's going to look like this. Here's the design. Here's how it's going to fit into the stuff we do. And then the next presentation, it was completely different when I showed everyone. It's going to look like this now. And then I finally implemented the third idea I came up with and then someone said no you can't do it like that because we have this problem and then there had to be a fourth iteration before I finally put it into the tree so it was really good to get feedback from people to be able to think about how to solve a problem over a long period of time and then finally get it going. Oh, that was great. Uh, I love Japan as it is. Uh, I like the food. I love the culture. But interacting with the developers there is kind of really important because it seems that they're in this transition point between when all the corporations have figured out, yes, we have to do Linux stuff, we're going to do Linux stuff, and then getting all the engineers in on it. And this, is, this takes a long time. So uh, I, I think it's really important that main kernel developers go to Japan, interact with the developers, and show them, like, we will listen to you. Please interact with us because even even at the social functions I had to go up to people tap them on the show like hi I'd like to talk to you they really are shy and they're apprehensive because they see you know it's, it's it's a very active and sometimes volatile development environment and you know we have to get them past that that point it's really important there's a lot of there's a lot of resources available if we can make this work <laughs>